our honored guest, Mr. Bansal. <coughs> Mr. Atlas Bansal is the founder and CEO of Chetu Inc., a software solution provider which specializes in helping businesses overcome their technology challenges across various industries, including finance and banking, payments, healthcare, hospitality, travel, retail, e-learning and education, pharmaceuticals and others. K2 solutions are leveraged by both Fortune 500 companies and emerging enterprises in solving business problems. Mr. Bansal has grown K2 from a single employee in 2000 to a global company with over 1,100 employees spread across 14 locations in the US, Europe, and Asia. Mr. Bansal's passion crosses all aspects of his business, from overseeing operations and client management to client acquisition. His technical expertise and business acumen have allowed Chetu to quickly climb the Inc. 5000 list of America's fastest growing private companies for five consecutive years. Prior to founding Chetu, Mr. Bansal worked for IBM and Sapien while earning his degree in electrical engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur. Mr. Bansal resides in South Florida with his wife and his two children. I had a wonderful lunch with him. All of us, whether you are baby boomers, gener Generation X, or you are millennials, we had a discussion about what future the future holds, and Mr. Bansal had a lot of very interesting input to discuss how all of us could contribute to the future of our nation. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Bansal. Thank you, Dr. Jung. Just keep the pressure up there. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, first of all, express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to the College of Engineering and Computing for inviting me and hosting me today. Thank you so very much. Good afternoon, fellow engineers. Hopefully you're having a good day today. Almost there. Yeah. Uh, it is an honor and pleasure to, to, to be delivering my keynote uh, to a bright young uh, graduate student here. Uh, giving a keynote to college grads is like having your own roast. Except you do the jokes on your own life, but you do it yourself. <laughs> so go ahead, sit back, relax. It's not about your life, it's about my life. <laughs> Feel free to LOL. Listen to what I'm saying on my successes and failures. I would not mind it at all. As you know, FIU is a research one university. It is an integral part of the local South Florida community. Uh, it is propelling knowledge employment throughout our South Florida community. Um, I'm proud to disclose that my wife, Shelly, did her master's from FIU. And my company, CHA2, has a lot of employees that are actually graduates and uh, post uh, graduates from FIU, I should say. So I would like to thank you for running it. Thank you guys for being a participant in it. Um, Friends, let us start by recognizing the people behind you, your family members, where they are, whether they are in this hall or not. It is your family's constant support and many, many sacrifices that has helped you get here. That they not only stood by you to give you motivation and strength, but made personal sacrifices to give you the opportunity to pursue higher education. A round of applause for family members. <laughs> Thank you so much, and again, thanks to my family for guiding me and for supporting me. Folks, you've worked very hard today. Uh, you've worked very hard to arrive to this day. Some of you went through a lot of hardships. Some of you are immigrants. Some of you are kids or grandkids of immigrants. Some of you are probably the first one to ever achieve a higher education degree in your own family. Kudos to you. Hats off to you. You worked very hard to get here. I would appreciate a round of applause for that. But then again, you did not start this journey to stop here. Today is not a place to stop, it is a place to start. You earned this degree to go somewhere. So, now what? The only tangibles that you will walk out with today is a well-written piece of paper and the blue-colored gown. It's the intangibles that you will walk out with today that will empower you, that will propel you further. But wait, I rushed through my excitement. Who am I? I'm actually 
one of the kids right in this hall 20 years ago. To be honest, um, sorry for being a little emotional there. Uh, I earned my degree 20 years ago, just like where you are. And, um, and I don't know how I came where I am today, but I would like to tell you how I came here today. Hopefully you can learn from it. Um, my point is, how do you take a kid who just got his graduate degree at 20 years and, and end up owning a company with 1,100 employees? Honestly, I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> it is my belief it can happen to any one of us. You see, I don't have six fingers. I don't carry an extra brain. Nor am I that kid that you read in newspapers who solved dark matter problems when they were eight years old. I am as normal as any one of us. For today's purposes, I have divided my, my little speech into four parts to give you life's lessons in my own words. Each part has a little title. The first part is called Life's Planning, Lack of Time. After getting my college degree, I followed my friends. I saw these friends who were going in one direction, hoping that they knew where they were going, and they're going after the next big thing. I just followed them. Sometimes not knowing what to do or preparing for it, we simply do what others are doing. I did so. Rightfully so, because when we come out of college, we're semi-lost. Plus, after getting a degree, we feel that we just made a big accomplishment. Well, the degree should sell by itself. That's what we think. We take a break and we celebrate the progress we're making in life. To be quite frank, it took me a year to realize that. To this day, I remember calling my dad after getting a second or third paycheck. I called him, asking for more money. When I called him, there was dead air for five seconds. And my dad said, did you just get paid? And I said, yes, but I spent all my money on a new Levi jeans and Ray-Ban, a big thing in India at that time. <laughs> Fortunately, Destiny had a beautiful gift waiting for me after a year. It took me out of India and put me in the U.S., isolated of every possibility of a support system. No parents, no teachers, no friends. You're on your own. Honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my entire professional career. It made me think on my own. Eventually, I realized that my life can be simply divided into four simple segments of 20, 25 years each. You're just completing segment one. I will be going to segment two at 42. I realized that segment one, the first 20 years of our lives, 20, 25 years of our lives, we are laying the foundation. We have a support system around us, parents, teachers, friends that help us, they guide us, they teach us, and we learn because we have to prepare for the next half of our, for, for the next three segments of our life. But then I realized segment two is the most crucial and critical part of my life. As soon as I get, get out of college, if I do not spend the next 20, 25 years properly, it will be near impossible for me to change the direction. Whatever I will be in the first, in the second segment, I will be that forever. So I realized I don't have an option. I either make it or I don't. Actually, it gets worse. I just realized that in segment two, I only had five to 10 years because after the five to 10 years, I might get married, I might have kids, my career would only be one of many responsibilities. So I realized that first five to 10 years getting out my degree, getting my degree in the next five to 10 years was it. It was time to hunker down and go. But where? Part two, my passion, engineering. During my initial career, I started to find my strength in the corporate world. As an engineer, I felt like my brain had been trained to look at things discreetly, black or white, logical or illogical, good or bad. Even when I saw gray, I separated the black and white in the gray to make it more discreet, black or white. In my view, such a mindset allowed me to discreetly identify problems and fix them. I liked to be a problem solver and hence a solution provider. Folks, that is literally what my company does today. We solve business problems by using technology. My passion became my business. Lived in one of the greatest eras today, engineers are playing a pivotal role in every single discipline. Doctors use medical records. 
for patient, patient management. Doctors use robotic arms for surgeries. These buildings created by civil engineers. I can go on, but the point is, the engineers are playing a very pivotal role, and you are one of them now. As a matter of fact, my engineering background helps me every single day as a business owner. My company runs on streamlined processes that have been architected to minimize wasteful efforts and enhance productivity, also known as lean or mean machine, or process engineering. Part three, focus and distractions. The single biggest personality trait that stands out in my career is focus. It is funny that this used to be my biggest weakness. I still remember back then in 1999, when I was working for Sapien, I had a manager named Eugene. My, on my first review, working for the Transamerica Project in Charlotte, I asked him about my strengths and weaknesses. He said, it all. you're very sharp, you're very smart, very hardworking, but you lose focus too quickly. As a result, you jump from one problem to another and nothing is properly done. I remember those words very clearly. As a matter of fact, the word focus has been on my whiteboard in each of my offices, staring at me every single day, reminding me. I realized that it did not matter on how many things I did, what mattered was how many I completed with perfection. Today, I can tell you that focus is my biggest strength. So much so that if you let me on a problem, I forget what is around me. You want to keep me busy? Give me a problem. Ask my wife and she will tell you. In fact, she calls my laptop as the other wife. <laughs> Folks, to maintain focus, you need to minimize distractions. Opinions of others and media are biggest distractions. Although I feel I had it easy. As millennials, you have bigger distraction. That is social media. A desire to know about others and to tell others about you. Growing up, when I used to watch the game of cricket on TV, my mom always used to say that you're wasting your time. You see those players playing the game? They're making money, and you're wasting it. It has stuck with me. The reason is simple. In any activity, there is a producer and there is a consumer. People who make the movies become successful. People who watch those movies pay them to be successful. The question is, who should you be? The guy who uses social media or the one who built it? Both have the same amount of time in the day. Part four, in the last part. Stay humble, stay trustworthy. In the early days of business and tough times, my father helped me a lot. He also gave me important tips about running a business. One of them was to stay trustworthy. He taught me that business is run on words and promises. If you said something, you must do it. Even if you made a wrong commitment, suck it up and do it. I did not quite understand, but I followed my father's advice. Eventually dawned on me that without trust, there is no team. And without team, there is no company. For me to build a team around me, I had to stay trustworthy. Strangers became close friends. They relied on me, and I relied on them. Further, by staying humble, I could advice from complete I could get advice from complete strangers, things that I could not have possibly found on my own. Friends, to wrap up my keynote, if I was to summarize my life's lessons in reverse order, my tips would be stay humble, stay trustworthy, find your passion as soon as you can. Then remove all distractions, put your blinders on, and go. Go as fast as you can. Go as hard as you can. You're entering the most critical segment of your life, segment two, and you do not have time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vassal, for your inspirational and heartfelt remarks.